all right so welcome back welcome back to this video so in the last video we have uh, learned the theoretical integration between uh, this sr gan super resolution gan so building a gan to actually uh, increase the re resolution of an image given a blurred image making so just training the model to actually uh, increase the uh, quality of that image so that is the thing that we have learned in the last video so in this video we will be trying to implement that so i have uh, I have this code with me, so I have um, I have implemented this uh, little notebook for you, right? In, through which you could actually understand this. So I will go through the code also, right? So uh, I'll review again. I'll review what is uh, SR GAN, super resolution GAN again. So the idea of super resolution GAN is to take in a like a blurred image and use uh, super resolution GAN to actually produce a unblurred image or high quality image so that is our idea how can you do that so we have learned how to do that we have uh, built a gan function and we have essentially changed change the loss function right so we have built this architecture this side of architecture and we and we have also changed a loss function mainly so we have added this as, uh, so rather than using this uh, pixel wise msc loss so rather than just separating the pixels we will not use this loss we will only use this lsr vgg loss in which we'll uh, you input the high resolution image and the predicted image to a VGG, right? So we'll get the image predicted by the GAN, super resolution GAN, the unblurred image, the, or the prediction for the unblurred image. We'll pass the actual un unblurred image and the prediction for the unblurred image into a VGG, into a similar VGG, and we'll get an output as a output of a CNN, let's say, output or maybe some some type of uh, convolution network, so of some type of layer, CNN layer, and we'll get this output of this both of uh, of like we'll get the output for both of these images and then we'll uh, subtract the values and you know just look at this feature difference rather than just pixel difference like how what, like what are the different like what is the difference of features and then we'll uh, we'll and then we'll just essentially we'll subtract all these values and uh, like add, add add all the differences and that will essentially be our loss function right so that is our idea so that is the uh, we'll that is what we'll be and now and we'll also use adversarial loss to actually make the uh, generator uh, pull the discriminator. So that is our idea, right? So we'll uh, even though we'll not develop this sophisticated architecture, I'll have uh, no, yeah, we have uh, developed this architecture almost, almost we are uh, we have all developed almost this architecture almost. So let's go to code. Let's go to the code. Let's see how everything goes. So yeah. And first cell will import numpy and the image resize function from scipy. And then we'll also create a function called HR images in which we'll just convert these images into like an numpy array. Right. And then uh, like this is like high resolution images and this is like low, low resolution images. Right. The uh, inputs. And then we'll just loop through all of these uh, images, uh, like real images, like all of these images. And we'll have to append all of these values, right? We'll, so we'll just resize these values into, uh, like we'll just downscale these values. And then we'll append to this uh, list images. And we'll just finally return this list. list. We'll just convert this list into numpy array and return this list. So that is the idea. And then the next cell, the next cell we have, um, you know, implemented some more libraries that we'll be needing. We'll be implemented in, in, like we have. Uh, so we have imported, activate like many, like layers mainly, layer mainly layers. Uh, like continuity, continuity transpose, upsampling layer, input layer, batch normalization layer, and activation layer to actually build the activation functions. To add, add activation functions, also we'll, we have implemented the add layer to add like both those values in the in the case of residual connections to actually add the previous value to of course uh, solve the problem of vanishing gradients right and then uh, we'll build the first function res residual block gen in which we'll take in the model the kernel size the filters and strides and then uh we'll just build the model first like this like one block so this is essentially this is not essentially not the generator it's just one block of the generator so we'll have multiple blocks of this so we'll have uh, these are the inputs we'll take in the model like the i think the 
the input to this we'll take in the kernel size the size of this kernel each kernels and we'll filters is corresponding to the number of filters that we'll be needing and the strides which will be of course the strides strides that will be taken while performing the cnn operation right so i'll first uh, store this model into a variable called generator i'll first store this i sorry for that all right so we'll be uh, developing the each block so we'll have uh, multiple blocks of uh, blocks we'll be impl implementing multiple blocks in which you know the input propagates the value propagates and uh, hopefully we'll get to some amazing con conclusions or the amazing final outputs so yeah we'll be implementing these blocks so each block will contain these layers so we'll have one c count 2d layer and and we'll there is no need to use many count 2d transpose layers because we are uh, like we are not uh, building an image we are not generating image from scratch we are not uh, like taking in noise and generating image rather than that we are just taking uh, input image and based on that image right based on that image uh, we are going to rebuild that image right essentially we will be taking an image and we are not going to build an image from scratch but based on this previous uh, like base like previous foundations uh, from the input image we are going to build an image so therefore we'll be not using many count 2d transpose layers i don't think yeah we are going to use upstream block only all right so we'll be uh, developing this count 2d layer with uh, these number of filters which will be in, in, entered by this uh, entered when we, we are going to call this function and then we're going to use the kernel size which will be the size of each kernels and we'll input strides and the padding what we want the padding to be and we'll just take the like uh this output to be the input of this layer and then we'll perform bat batch normalization with momentum momentum of 0 0.5 and you can actually update this values whatever you want i'm I just uh, experimenting and then we'll perform pre relu when param parameterized relu don't worry about don't worry about that too much now i'll probably cover about that in the future videos it's not actually important based on the context we are only learning about we are learning mainly about this sr again so we'll probably focus more on that so you know it's a, it's like having parameters for each value so we'll we, we will discuss that right we'll discuss that in the future videos it's a, it is essentially like relu but a little different don't worry about that so we'll perform this pre relu function on this output uh model and then we'll take and then we'll perform a quantity layer and then file batch normalization layer so this is the each block we're going to have and then we're going to after performing all of this we are values we're going to add this uh, previous generator output we are going to add this res residual from this uh, uh, gen uh, variable i hope you understand what is going on and we'll we can just return the model which will essentially make which will essentially be like uh, you know a bunch of layers that are, that are uh, through which the value is going to propagate right so now let's build another function the upsampling block to actually create the upsampling block we're going to create two blocks uh this one res block gen okay and ups upsampling block we're going to take in the model and the kernel size and the filters and strides we're going to again build a con 2d and then we're going to initialize a number of filters kernel size strides and padding and we're going, to, we're going to take in the value of model which will going to be the previous output and then we're going to have we're going to perform upsampling 2d uh, on this model on this output and then we're going to also going to perform leaky relu on this output and finally return this model also so essentially we have developed two blocks that we could reuse them again and again whenever we want so now let's build this main generator class the main um, thing of this video the main not not this video like the main generator so we'll create a class right now we're going to create a class and we're going to in create the initialize function with uh which 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 is, is through which we could just set the noise shape right and then we're going to take in the noise shape yeah and then we're going to perform this con 2d layer so we're going to yeah so we're going to perform conventional 2d layer on this um noise layer noise so and then we're going to have 64 layer 64 64 kernels and each kernel we're going to have a nine by nine so each kernel size is going to be nine by nine and we're going to have a stride of one and then padding we are going to, we are going to add padding and then we are going to have parameters value on this output of this conventional 2d layer and then we're going to have a again we are going to like store this uh the current output into this variable gen model 
just to make sure uh, we use uh, like residual connections so i'll loop uh, now i'll loop, loop through like uh, for like 16 times and add this resnet block so we're going to have 16 resnet blocks so yeah a pretty complex architecture and then uh, we're going to perform residual networks and the, the input will be model and we're going to keep on updating model so therefore uh, we're going to have a bunch of relay layers that are uh, linearly propagated or linearly connected and after we perform uh, n like 16 number of residual layers we're going to have a like the final loud final uh final conversion layer with the 64 filters and three kernel size this is going to be the final output the final image and then we're going to perform batch normalization and then uh we'll add the residuals and then uh we're going to have a we're going to have some upsampling blocks also right upsampling blocks also right uh we're going to take in the model and uh you know like some some parameters right three uh three by three kernels so 256 three by three kernels right and uh we don't have two upsampling blocks and then after that we can get the final output layer which is going to be three kernels and each with the kernel size of nine by nine right and then we'll apply the final activation function which is tan h we do the tan h activation function right and then we can just fix the model we're going to assemble the model the generator at least so we're going to create a model tier tensorflow model uh we're going to create an object of that with the inputs, which will be the generator input, right here, generator input is nothing but a uh, noise essentially. So again, the generator is, I, I'm going to remind you that generator is not going to take the actual image, but it is going to compare its output to this um, actual image. So therefore, theoretically, one might say that the generator is going to know what the actual image is, theoretically, because the loss function is, uh, will be learned, known by the generator, but still it is not the actual input. We are not going to perform all these layers on the, actual input so therefore <clears throat> like you could argue argue at both sides but yeah so that is the idea we'll take in the noise function and then we'll uh, propagate all of this so input is going to be generator input and output is going to be <clears throat> this model this layer model the final layer right so now let's build the discriminator block and the discriminator now let's build the discriminator so we are going to import a bunch of layers uh I think we have implement important them here. Maybe. Okay. So now uh let's build a discriminator block. So we're gonna build this block and we're gonna use them multiple times. So we're gonna build discriminator blocks with uh like the model, the previous input, the filters, kernel size sprites again. We're going to uh, create a convolution 2D layer and the batch normal and the liquid LU, and we're going to return the model. So we can essentially use this block again and again, just uh, like just like we did uh with the GAN block. Like both of this is GAN block, uh, GAN blocks, right? So we're going to build a class, discriminator class. Again, we're going to have initialized layer. So the input is going to be input shape, which is going to so the input to the discriminator is going to be the uh, like the real or fake images. So the y or y hats. So y, whereas y corresponds with high resolution, high resolution, high resolution images, and uh, y hat corresponds with super resolution images, which is the output of our models model. And then we'll build the main function, main uh, the discriminator function in which we'll do all of these layers. So we're going to have uh, input layer. Shape is going to be self dot input image shape, right? So, uh, right. And then uh, we'll have a convolution 2D layer, CN 2D layer, uh, like just CN layer and the leaky value. And then let's we'll repeat this discriminator block blocks a bunch of times. So we can just add many of these as you want. So we will have, we'll perform these discriminator blocks. Sorry. Right. And then we'll have a flatten layer to flatten all of these outputs into a like a one dimensional vector and we'll perform a 1024 uh, hidden neurons model. So, so dense, just like feed forward neural network. So, we're going to have these many number of outputs. And then we could perform leaky ReLU and then final dense layer, which will have one output. And uh, we're going to use a sigmoid activation function, right, to actually determine whether the output is zero or one. And now we could actually uh, assemble our discriminator model, right? We're going to call the uh, model uh, object. And then the input is going to be this uh, discriminator's input, which is uh, the image. The output is going to be uh, the model. So image corresponds with not the input, not the input blur image, but the uh, like actual image, Y or Y hats. All right. And then, uh, and then we could just build the loss function now. 
right so in the la- in the last video i have uh, talked to you about vgg loss like what is vgg loss so we're going to perform vgg layer on the act like high resolution image and we're going to perform vgg layer on super resolution image so the input like the actual the actual output and the uh, the output of our model so we're going to perform this vgg layer and then we're going to perform this uh, we're going to subtract this to actually get the loss so that is what we'll be implementing here so you know we are going to create a vgg loss function which checks in y2 and y pred here y2 corresponds with actual images which is the actual high resolution image and y pred corresponds with the predicted high resolution image what the model predicts the high resolution images right and then we can just create a vgg layer we can just create a vgg layer like actually a pre trained vgg layer so from this like from this library keras there is a library called keras applications dot uh, like from keras applications there are like many pre trained models like just like apis you can just access them so you know we could just access vgg19 just like that so we'll access vgg19 right so we'll, we'll build a function which is lost with the, these inputs right right and then we'll uh, we'll just take in we'll we'll build a model we'll call this vgg19 loss uh, like function or object we'll create an object and then uh, we'll not include the top we'll not include the final layers because we'll not be needing the final layers we'll only we'll we'll only be needing like the features and then we'll uh, set the ima- weights to be image net so image net is a data set in which the model is actually trained on and then we'll set the input shape what is going to be input shape which is uh, image shape and then we'll set the vgg dot trainable equals false because we don't want to train the model because it is already trained we just want to pass these inputs just to see what are the what the features uh, like the vgg has found and then we'll loop through all of these vgg layers and we'll set the set that they are not trainable and now now we can actually uh, create the model right so we'll just now we can just call this model function model object on this uh, uh, like layers so what we'll what, what we'll doing is the input is going to be vgg19.input and the output is going to be uh, like this particular layer so this is going to be the output layer with, through which we could actually get the features that we want and then we can get this output and then we will set the model to be not trainable we will not train the model and then we could just uh, we could just call this model on y2 the act, like the actual high high like high resolution image and the we can call the model on y pred which is the predicted high resolution image we could just subtract both of these values we could subtract the features so how like how similar or how far like far apart the features are and then we'll square this value we'll square the difference and we can just find the mean like just like mean square error just mean square error but not on pixel values but on like the feature vectors right so we'll be building this loss function that is a loss function and we'll let's move on now now let's build the gan uh, like gan network we'll combine all of this uh, like generator and the discriminator that we have previously built to build the gan the outside gan so the gan takes in discriminator the shape the generator the optimizer and the vgg loss as it is a function right so we are going to set discriminator dot trainable equals false so first we are going to set discriminator to be not trainable right so we'll just take in, taking this input i uh, like uh, with a specific shape and we are going to pass that to uh, the like the generator we are going to pass that uh, like image to the generator and the gan output the gan output is going to be discriminator of x so yeah so we're going to pass that uh, like so so we're going, to, we're going to pass this value to discriminator and then we'll essentially we'll build a model in which the inputs are gan input and the outputs are x and the gan output so which is actually the output of this uh, discriminator and then we could just compile the model with uh, vgg loss so so we're going to use vgg loss and binary cross entropy for the like um, for for the generator and we're going to use binary cross entropy for the discriminator right we will just set the loss weights and the optimizer which will be initialized in the function while calling the function you could initialize initialize that now we'll now we'll build another function to actually get the uh, like atom optimizer to build the atom optimizer to get the atom optimizer initialize the atom optimizer now let's build a train final training function 
So you can just go through the code if you want to. So we'll build a function in which will take in epochs, batch size, input direction, input directory, output directory, model save directory, number of images, and test train test ratio. Train test ratio means uh, the ratio of number of training images and the number of testing images. For example, fifty percent means uh, like fifty percent is training images and fifty percent testing images. So like fifty percent is actually very high, like for test images. So we'll probably set something like seventy five percent or eighty percent. You know, because you don't you, you want to model you want to train the model more and you know test the model less. Like you could test the model more, but yeah. All right, so now uh we can just call the generator. We'll call the uh, generator, we'll pass in this input, right? And then uh we'll just call the generator and then we'll pass pass uh, this output, this generator's output. So we'll take so okay. So we we so we are just initializing this. So we are not actually calling this output because remember they are classes. I have built them as classes. So therefore we'll just create objects of these classes, right? So we'll just, and we'll call these functions. We'll essentially call these functions. And then we could just uh, initialize the optimizer and compile model, compile the generator, and then compile the discriminator. And now we could actually do that, right? So now we could actually uh, Call this function get GAN network to actually pass the disc pass the discriminator, the generator, the optimizer, and the VCG loss and the shape to actually get the GAN network. So uh, we'll get the GAN. And now let's uh now we'll just like essentially like uh like it's like save the model and all that, creating locks. So again, now here we will build a training training uh, loop in which we'll loop through like one to a one to epoch minus one, epoch plus one. And then, uh, you know, we we are going to do some like bunch of text thing. So we're going to have like multiple fifteen. Uh, like what is this sign? This we're going to have fifteen this sign, and we're going to specify the number of epoch. And then now we could actually uh go to the training loop. So we'll just create some random numbers. Uh, to actually pass that to the generator. Right. So you know we're going to get the X train HR. Like high resolution, high resolution images. Like get these uh, random numbers and predict on this. Uh, like you will use generator to actually predict on these random numbers. And then now we could actually uh create real data y and fake data y, right? So essentially we'll just uh like create create like uh a, a matrix of like batch size, like just num ones and we'll separate with separate them with from uh. Like this random sample of batch size, and then uh, we'll we'll and now let's uh, train our discriminator. So so we'll so we'll try set discriminator equal true. So we're going to set like we're going to train the discriminator first. So we're going to set discriminator or train will equal true, and then we're going to calculate the loss. Like we're going to train on batch on uh, these two images, two these two pairs. The image batch hits high resolution image. So here this uh, corresponds to the uh actual out outputs the original outputs and this corresponds to the predicted outputs right and we're going to call like sorry what is real data by i think the, yeah so these are just random numbers so these are just random numbers so this is not the output of the generator so now this is the output of the generator this is the output of the generator generator images sr like super resolution so we're going to pass that discriminator both these real values and the fake values and just see how it performs just to see how it performs and then uh we'll have uh we'll get some random numbers some uh like to pass right and then um right so we'll and then now we'll set discriminator to be not trainable so we're not going to train the discriminator now now we'll do the same for the gans so we'll just train on batch on uh like the roll load resolution images the high resolution images and like uh, the GAN Y, which is equal to uh, these values, so these random values. And then now, uh, we'll, we'll calculate this GAN Y gen, which is essentially going to be these values again, these random values. And we'll uh, train on batch, we'll train on these batches, like batch wise training on this uh, low resolution images. And like these uh, high resolution images, GAN Y and GAN Y gen. And after that, we'll after performing these values, after updating these values uh, for a very long time, we are going to get like 
like right not not a very long time so yeah so like you're going to do that for each batch and then uh, for each epoch so this is for each epoch and then we're essentially going to save this model log file also at each epoch so that is the thing so thank you for watching hope you got anything useful from this uh, and i'll see you in the next video so yeah